Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your sketching pal Becky and we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, I've been sort of using this bullet journal layout for the past two years and I realize I've never really shared it but I think there's kind of a crossover between the sketching community and the planning slash journaling community and I've actually been quite active in the journaling community lately or at least attending a lot of streams and such and I wanted to be a little bit more creative in the way I journal just because I think that this was a system that kind of got my life in order, got everything in place. So I thought I'd share a little bit of what my journaling layout looks like, starting with uh, this new journal actually, just because I just finished my old um, journal, which is also a 120 GSM Loish term 1917 bullet journal in the blush pink. So I did get their flagship uh bujo model but this one i'm using at the moment is actually from my friend who kind of gifted this to me and you will see in a bit that she actually gave me a little letter and all and um i'm using like really simple supplies to kind of bullet journal so it's mainly just a couple of uni pin pens um fine liners a pencil a ruler and a fountain pen to write a little bit of stuff in and a little bit of my watercolors as well, which I will talk about in a bit. So um, as you can see, even though it's kind of quote unquote new, I actually already marked it with pencil, um, mainly because I was a little bit too scared to put everything on screen um, and to sketch everything for the first time. So um, you get to see kind of the polished up version of it and also sped up. So it kind of looks like I'm a little bit more confident in what I'm doing when in actuality, I'm not really, but I just kind of know what I'm doing a little bit because I've been doing it for so long. Um, you saw that in the beginning, I was sort of putting my contact info down, but I obviously didn't fill out the whole thing because you guys are not going to get my phone number or my private email because that, that's that's just weird, guys. Like, we don't, we don't do that. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you can just hit me up in the comments or if you're on Discord or on Twitch streams, you would probably see me floating around speeding things up a little bit um this is actually where you get to see a little bit of the journal um this is me trying to cover up the letter and um so this journal actually comes with like a little bit of an index page and uh now i am trying to sort of number in and count kind of silly uh because i already have markings in the middle so i didn't see that I already put there with my unipin 0 0.8 um millimeter and I, this is my uh, future log or my yearly log. And this is something that I put down for the big events in my year. Uh, so things like if I join a big conference or I hit a milestone. So um, actually for this month, I'm not sure if I put it in, but I just hit a thousand subscribers, which, woo, thank you so much, you guys, for all your support because I wouldn't have done this without you. Um, no, I just checked my journal. I didn't put it in. But basically, uh, this month I am starting a new job, so it does feel like quite transitory as well, or transitionary, um, that I'm starting this new bullet journal at the same time that I'm starting my new job. But in reality, it's because like my old journal like literally ran out, so I have no more space to do anything. Uh, so that's why this journal is here. And I'm also putting down my resolutions for the year. So I don't have any resolutions for 2023 just yet, but I am inserting a couple of resolutions that I have for 2022. And um, you can see the four right here. I don't know if you guys want me to talk about it. Maybe I can talk about it in another video if you would like that. But it's really basic stuff. It's first is I just want to build a passive income stream, uh, you know, with job uncertainty and uh, kind of like the economy going sort of re. Um, or awry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that word. Uh, with the economy going downwards, I think it's always safe to just kind of have like a safety net and kind of diversify your income a little bit. So I was focusing on that. And then the next is I also want to eliminate financial anxiety because it kind of rocked my 2021 a lot. So I wanted to create a budget and stick to it. I want to uh, build my work knowledge just to be uh, learning more every day and also improving myself a little bit more. And then I also want to be more attentive and kind to the people around me. Flipping over to the next page, this is my 2023 um, future log, which will have nothing in them because I have no idea what is going to happen next year, but we will take things as it goes. Oh, there you go, new job in 2022. That is what I'm putting down. And this is just a simple layout, really, because I'm just going to be writing everything in kind of big 
notes and so that new job text was just sort of an example of how I would use it. And I'm just using my Unipin um, brush pen actually to do this because I really like how it looks. I really like how flexible it is. I know a lot of people are on the Tombo Fudenosuke like hard tip camp, but I actually really like the soft um, soft nib because I think you can get a lot more like variety in your brush strokes, and I think it just looks a little bit more, um, a little bit more not cartoony, but a little bit more natural or a little bit more handwritten. Yeah, I guess that's the word. And uh, this is going to be my cover page for the month. I'm going to talk about the design a little bit later because I just kind of like to put the liner face first for everything. So um, this is my month cover page and I do the same layout every single month. So this does not change because I found out that, you know what, this layout works for me. Why bother changing it? So what I do is I draw something on the left, usually like something iconic that I watched in the last month or so or a game I played. And this one is actually um, my new work location. So I wanted to draw that. And on the right page right here is actually a monthly overview. So I really like this diagonal look. And what I do is actually I put all my social commitments with people and who I met on the right. And then on the very right edge of the page, um, I would put things like, uh, when did I go to gym? So that's a G and then um, my contact lens status. So if it's a C circle, it means that I just put it on and because I wear like two week contact lens. So I mark when is actually the last day I can wear it just so I keep track of it. And then on the left, I keep notes of like occasions. So for example, I had like a last day and a first day on the left and then like my break in between. So that's what I put there. And then the next two pages is also a little bit of a monthly overview. So um, this first page that I'm making right here is my shopping tracker because in 2020 and 2021, my shopping kind of went out of control a little bit. So um, you know that saying like when you write your expenses down, you tend to be a little bit more conscious of it and so you spend less. So this is what I'm trying to do here. Um, I just try to keep track of not everything, like not groceries and stuff, but like big-ish expenses that are not really necessary or sometimes necessary, for example, like just last month I had to buy a new washing machine and it was a little bit pricey so I put that there um, if I'm treating myself to like a fountain pen or two like I would put that there too and then on the right is new discoveries so um, movies games books podcasts um, I tend to put that there because media has such a big influence on my life and I sometimes have like memories tied to it so I want to keep track of my influences like from media right there uh, even though it's kind of weird, but like social media, it's all like these micro influences because you don't really know like what movie exactly you're watching if you're watching like a reel. But anyway, I'm keeping track as best as I can. And this is like the next few layouts. So um, this is my weekly spreads. And I did actually kind of count this before I went on camera just because I wanted to be sure of the dots because the bullet journal dots and the actual 120 dot grid, the normal ones, they have different... Um, there's a different number of dots. So the bullet journal LT has a little bit more border on the edges, I think because they know like people tend to decorate them a little bit more. Whereas the dot dot grid basic notebook, they just actually maximize the dots to the very edge. So there's a few extra dots. So I had to do a little bit of adjusting and a little bit of calibrating. And um, I'll explain how the weekly spreads here look or work in a bit. But as you can see, because I'm using this fine liner and I'm sort of tracing everything from like the back page to the front page, it actually does leave a faint mark. So I'm actually able to just like duplicate that and um, just trace basically the marks and make it thicker. I'm not too fussed about keeping everything super um, clean because I know that this is just for me. This is not even for like Instagram because I've never even posted this before until today. And the only reason I'm really posting it is because it's a new spread does not have anything in there but I will show you how it works later with a pencil because I'm not revealing any of my actual work and actual friends names on here um so my spreads for my weekly spreads are kind of simple I tend to clump them all together in the beginning because I only want to set up my bullet journal once a month like I don't want to set it up every week like I know some people do uh, I want to do it once a month keep it kind of consistent it's been the same layout that I've been following since uh, a bit of trial and error and then after I finish like making all the lines I will put in the dates a little bit later All right, so watercolor stage and this is actually just like a really simple painting that I will do in the cover page just to give it a little bit more color and 
I just got a job in like the financial center in Hong Kong. So there's this really big building called the International Financial Center, literally, that、uh, kind of symbolizes it. And I wanted to mark that because I feel like、um, it's kind of like a Hong Kong dream to work in the finance industry. Kind of not that I'm doing finance as a job function, but I'm doing something adjacent to it.、Um, so this is a building. That is one of the tallest in Hong Kong, one of the most iconic, really, on the Hong Kong Island side. So I wanted to、uh, mark that and draw that in. So that is two IFC, and then there is a smaller one on the right, which is one IFC, and they have like kind of a similar shape. And then all the other buildings, I just kind of want to make them very muted colors, very low in saturation, not a lot of vibrancy, so that they kind of fade into the background. And then there's this mountain behind it. That is very iconic to Hong Kong because Hong Kong is known for a lot of、uh, mountain slash building combinations. And now I'm just going off to the side to blow dry it for a little bit.、Um, normally, I would actually just let it air dry because, as you can see in a bit,、uh, when you blow dry, they tend to pull up in splotches. Like I know that this LT is not watercolor paper. So it doesn't really absorb everything really well. Like you really need to apply everything in very thin layers, but I do not care. It is my LT. It will, I will do whatever I want with it, and it doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to be mine. And、um, the next thing I'm doing is actually just coloring all around this shopping tracker. I don't know why I like to do this. I think it's something about coloring the border instead of coloring the middle that just gives it an illusion that it is like a printed page. Not that it is, but I kind of. Gravitate towards it in a way, and I'm using this like one-inch Princeton brush because it doesn't absorb a lot of water, and it is able to make big swatches. Because with、um, LT, as you might have noticed, is because it doesn't really absorb the paint. They tend to the watercolor tends to dry a little bit quick, and therefore they have a larger tendency to leave like the marks at the edges where the water kind of pools, and. I did struggle blow drying this a little bit because it ends up like pulling colors in a weird way that never really happens when I air dry it. But you know what? I wasn't gonna like wait for two hours for this to dry because actually, currently in Hong Kong, there's a typhoon passing through and it's really really humid at the moment. So、um, you can see like those swatches are really weird. But oh oh well, I just I guess I'll just have to live with it. Um, so this is my weekly spread, and I usually set up the dates first here. And this is a Tombow dual brush pen. So I like this because there is a brush pen on one end, and there's also like a marker tip on the other end. So I can kind of get the same exact color, but in like two different、um, marker ways or like pen marks, and it makes it really consistent. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just like labeling it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for some bits, but like for the Alistair method,、um, which I will show in a bit, it's just Monday to Friday because on weekends I don't really have like tasks to do because I have a Monday to Friday workday. Oh, also, workdays or weeks start on Monday. Like they do not start on Sunday. Whoever starts their weeks on Sunday, I do not trust them. I do not believe them with anything. And anyways. Um, yeah, so this is how I basically kind of write my social occasions. If there are two people, I will just put a dot there, and I will make sure I transfer them to the weekly as well, because it helps me keep track of how many people I'm meeting. Because I am actually such an introvert, so I want to actually be mindful of how many people I hang out with. Shopping tracker works really straightforward. I just total everything at the end of the month, so I can see how much I spend. And this is actually、um, the three columns on the left hand side. Is the、um, meal page because I think like food is always a variable expense, and I'm really trying to make sure that because it is a repetitive expense, like you know you eat like two to three times a day, that I'm not kind of overspending on food because it's really easy to do that.、Um, and then on the right there, as you can see, there's like some kind of repetitive stuff like email. I do it five times a week, like LinkedIn posts. I do it a few times a week. And then catching up with like my bosses, I do maybe once or twice a week. So I try to put that there as well as like、um, a tracking. And if I don't do it on one day, I should make sure I do it the next day and such. So these are tasks that are that I have to do like every day or on the regular. And then on the left hand side, I would put tasks that are a little bit more important. So for example, if a deadline's coming up, that's what I would do. And this is my bullet journal setup. Let me know if you guys like this or if I should do more of this. 
and I can't wait to catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye!